I've always been interested in the natural world. I remember reading as a young teenager Jurassic Park, the idea that these vastly complex creatures were encoded by a single genome sequence. That was a fascinating idea. It was a time where advances in genome sequencing allowed complete genomes to be generated for different organisms. And what this gave us was a parts list for all the different components which could be used to create the variety of life. It was a real surprise when the first human genome sequence was released that there were far fewer genes than were expected. In our body we have hundreds of distinct cell types, but all of them have essentially the same genome sequence. This changes our thinking because it highlights a different code which is also present in our cell, which we call the epigenome, which essentially are these molecular signposts which can be added to the DNA. An example would be that plants have been found where one individual will have completely different shaped flowers than another individual, and the underlying cause of that is not a change to the DNA sequence, but a change to these molecular signposts. Prior to our study, people had only been able to look at small snippets of the genome and identify where these molecular signposts were located. What we were able to do is look at the location of all these modifications throughout the entire genome. These first maps of the epigenome that we've created are now utilised by researchers the world over to understand how the gene that they're interested in might be turned on or off by these epigenetic processes. There was a major breakthrough in 2006 where researchers found out how to take specialised cells and turn them into a cell which was like an embryonic stem cell. For example, if people had a genetic defect which affected the heart, you could generate heart cells from these reprogrammed stem cells and then reintroduce them to the patient to fix the heart damage. What we found by mapping the epigenome in these reprogrammed cells was that there was a memory of the original specialised cell type and this epigenetic memory could have important implications for regenerative medicine. In our plant research now, we're trying to understand how the cells of the growing shoot tip give rise to the complex structures such as leaves or flowers. In the future, farmers might be able to manipulate this to trigger crop plants to grow more of a particular cell type. I love this job where you can come in every day and discover something which nobody has before. We're really in the midst of a genomics revolution.